Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Activities for People Living at Home with Dementia. We are proud to offer this series with funding from the Area Agency on Aging and the United Way of Tarrant County. These programs are recorded and are made available for viewing through a YouTube channel for future use. I am your host for today's activities. It is my pleasure to introduce to you from JPS, Marianne Contreras, she's an RN and she works in fall prevention and has some other letters behind her name and I'll let her tell you what all those mean. Marianne, the floor is yours, literally. <laughs> is Marianne in the big screen for everybody? Yes. Uh -huh. yes. Okay. Can you, can you, you see? Go. Can you see my slides? I'm sorry for interrupting there, Martha. Can you see my slides, you all? It says fall prevention? Yes. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Awesome. So, um, as, as Martha said, my name's Mary Ann Contreras. I am a nurse. I've been a nurse for 40 years. Um, my areas have been um, ICU and emergency and trauma care. And I've practiced in Texas and up and down the East Coast and a few countries around the world, actually. Oh, wow. um, I, right. It's, it's, it's been an amazing time. I, I love being a nurse. Um, I work now at John Peter Smith, which is our level one trauma center in Fort Worth, Texas. And so we take care of a lot of people that have injuries um, due to things like car crashes and um, hang on, car crashes and things like that and, and falls. And so today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about fall prevention. And at the end, if you have questions, I am so happy to answer them. So today we're going to talk about if you are at uh, risk for falls, um, things that contribute to falls, how to make your house safer, and how to improve some of your balance. I love animals. Um, I was super excited when I met Martha this morning, and she had that sweet bird. Um, Woodstock. Oh, Woodstock. Thank you. Thank you <laughs> on her head. Um, because, but I had because I have a lot of uh, animal oh. photos in my in my slides. So uh, we're going to get started. So a lot of people think um, that as I get older, I'm going to fall. But when we talk about getting older and we talk about aging, aging is really normal and predictable, irreversible changes of different organ systems over a period of time. So that's kind of like the scientific uh, definition of aging, but it's something that occurs that we can't stop no matter how many times you go to the fountain of youth or anywhere else or whatever vitamins you take, we're all going to age. Um, what we do know is that as we age, it, there we do see in our hospital and across our country a significant increase in falls. In fact, about one out of three people over the age of 65 falls. And if you fall once, you're twice as likely to fall again, but it can happen to anyone as we age. At my hospital at JPS, it is the second reason for a trauma admission um, in my hospital. And that's my mom. Um, she's in her mid eighties and her sister, and she's in her mid nineties. And so I do my best to give them all the information I have to try to keep them upright. And so far, so good. So um, I hope to be able to share with you some of that information. We do know that while the statistics show us that falls increase as we age, we know that they're preventable. We know that most falls occur at home and it's darn expensive. It is about 35,000 minimum. If you are admitted to the hospital, you have surgery and then you leave the hospital. An average cost is $35,000 and that's with no complications. So um, I put that picture up there. I'm sure you all remember uh, the, uh, the Dick Van Dyke show. Remember when he first came in the house, how um, the music started that da, 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 da. And yep, that, that's it, Martha. That's exactly it. And remember how he like traipses across the room. And as he's doing that, he hits that ottoman and just takes a big tumble. And so I like to put that little picture up there to remind us that even though we're at home and that's our place of security and safety and the place that we're most familiar with, it also is the place where most falls do occur. So just something to tuck in your mind uh, back there. But we do know that falls are not a normal part of aging. It, we shouldn't expect to fall. We should always be on the lookout of ways that we can prevent a fall because it isn't 
we shouldn't take it for granted that, fall, oh, I'm older now, so I'm going to fall again, or I'm going to fall. We need to be thinking proactively about ways to prevent falls. So we do know that as we get older, um, it is easier to hurt things. I don't know about you guys, but um, I take blood thinners. And um, if I just barely tap my arm, um, I get a bruise. We know that it causes, uh, in order to be injured as we age, it is much less force required to produce bigger injuries. And, and these photos are to help us remember that, you know, our, like uh, Steve's grandson that's gonna be coming any minute now, um, that as we get older or as children are young and they're learning how to walk, that they trip and fall all the time. They're always bonking their head, falling off of something, the swing or whatever it is, but they don't seem to get hurt. But we know that if we fall um, ages 65 and up, especially, it is much, much easier to break something. So how do you know if you're at risk? This is my dad. Um, and uh, he, he's a great guy, and he is definitely above the age of 50. He has a little heart disease. He's fallen before. Um, he takes a lot of medicine, um, and his blood pressure is a little iffy. Some days it's high, some days it's low, so that puts him at risk for falling. There's certainly a lot of other things that can contribute to falling, um, but those are some of the things that impact him, and I, I'm sure it impacts some of us even in this meeting today. Now, um, the next slide I'm gonna show you is talking about distractions. And as we, uh, we don't often think of distractions as a reason to fall, but they really are. Uh, you can be walking in a strange or in a newer part of your neighborhood, or you can be at a store or something uh, that you're not necessarily as familiar with and you're not paying attention and you get distracted and can fall. So the next slide I'm gonna show you is, is um, about not being distracted. This is a, um, it's not a real animal in this video. This is uh, something that's kind of fun and it lets us know that we always need to be aware of our environment and our surroundings. So let me make sure my sound is up and I'm gonna hit this. This is okay to laugh at. So this animal is running through the safari at, in Africa. Boom, right? He got distracted and definitely he fell down. So it's just something funny to think about and to remind us that we can be so distracted that we don't even see what's in front of us. So trying to stay focused wherever you are and wherever you're walking to is really important. Mm -hmm. um, when I teach young people about uh, car crashes and how to pay attention to the road, I show this same video. Um, and it, distraction really contributes to a lot of falls. So besides being distracted that can cause a fall, environmental risk factors. So environmental risk factors are things like floor surfaces that aren't regular, uh, that are not smooth, um, poor lighting, um, stairways that don't have handrails or loose rugs, um, unsturdy furniture, and especially cluttered areas. You see right here, sometimes we get, we get uh, oh, I'm gonna pick this up later, or I'm gonna just stack my, my newspapers or my reading material that I want to get back to beside the chair. Things that are cluttered also pose an environmental risk that increases that risk for falling. So keeping areas tidy and neat and clean like this, I wish my house looked like this, um, <laughs> is important. So um, removing things that stop you from having a pathway to walk. You always want to have a pathway. A lot of folks use some of their furniture as um, ways to stay. The lawn people are outside my window. I hope that's not too distracting. But um, a lot of people use furniture to kind of steady themselves as they walk, which isn't necessarily a bad idea. It, it, it's not a bad idea. You can use a couch or a chair or a table to steady yourself as you're walking through your house. But again, reducing that clutter is really important in keeping those pathways open, making sure you have enough light, that you have access to your phones in case you do fall, and that you secure loose carpets. And when I say easy phone access, what I'd love to tell folks to do is to all the time, if 
possible, keep your cell phone on you, whether it's in a pocket or um, an apron pocket. When you're at home, a lot of times we set our phones down and we don't pay too much attention to where we put them. And if you fall, that phone can be really good access to our 911 system. So what I've recommended and what we've seen pretty successful is if you have an apron, you put an apron on with a pocket. And for our gentlemen, um, they have what I call man aprons at Home Depot and Lowe's that are like your worker man aprons that you can put your nails and all your other thing in. You can tuck your phone in there as well. And that's something that keeps it with you at all times so that if you do fall, you're able to access 911. So speaking of pets, pets can be um, really influential in your ability to stay up or fall down. And I know Martha knows about that a little bit. And uh, pets, uh, we love our pets. Um, they are so important, especially now during COVID and in our socially restricted times, they are our companions. And, uh, but you need to be, we need to always keep in mind that they're they're wanting to be around us just as much as we're wanting to be around them. So being aware of where they are, making sure you have control when you answer the door, things like that, that your pet doesn't cause you to stumble. Um, and again, keeping that phone within reach. You see the other photo with the little cute little white dog pushing down on that lady's shoe. Something that we also see um, is as we age, our bones get thinner. And as our bones get thinner, unfortunately not always where we want them to get thinner, like our hips or things like that. Our bones can get thinner even in our feet and where our shoes fit. So you wanna make sure that your shoes fit all the way, especially in the back. A lot of people when they're at home, they have a tendency not to wear shoes or maybe to put on house slippers, but really wearing a proper fitting shoe, like a tennis shoe, um, um, some type of loafer, some type of shoe inside actually helps to keep you upright. It helps to keep you walking steady uh, where you have a good firm place to plant that foot. Another thing that aids in fall prevention is our nutrition, which is easy to slack off of. Um, regular meals, you know, whether it's two or three meals a day, you're doing the second bullet really well, the socialization, whether it's, ver whether it's virtual socialization or having, or going to Florida to greet your grandson um, or having other people in. Is socialization is really important. And those meals need to have all kinds of plants in them and some protein as well. Now, something I like to focus on that I've learned from our dietary folks um, is this, is water. And um, drinking water is really important. It can be um, bothersome as we age because uh, a lot of us take blood pressure medication that causes us to have to go to the bathroom a lot more and get up in the middle of the night. So a lot of people begin to cut down kind of naturally as they get older on their water consumption, which is not a good idea. Water is very important in keeping us upright and keeping our bodies fo uh, functioning the way that it needs to. Um, I mentioned that I am an old ER nurse, and I will tell you that when we get falls in our emergency department, one of the first things we do is we draw a lot of lab work and take a lot of x-rays. You guys know that. But what, we're find, what we see in the lab work is, is that people are dehydrated. And when, when you get dehydrated, even the slightest bit, it causes your equilibrium not to be equal. It causes you to have higher incidence of dizziness, of lower blood pressure or sometimes higher blood pressure that can cause you to fall. So drinking water is really, really important, even though it can be bothersome getting up in the night and having an adequate calcium intake, whether it's cheese or dark green leafy vegetables or milk, things like that are very, very important in keeping up with your vitamin D and your calcium. A few minutes. Ice cream. Time. You got to have ice cream. Ice, I had ice cream last night. That is, I'm so yeah, glad you said that. Right. Ice cream is wonderful. It is. It has great, uh, great calcium content. Yes. Thank yeah, you. I, so. I, I had kidney stones and you're all just said I needed to quit taking my calcium supplements. Oh, okay. Because I was drinking milk and I had ice cream and I had cheese and I was getting too much calcium. Okay. And so, yep. That's so, hard. That's hard. Well, I quit the supplement, and but I, I told them I'm not going to quit the ice cream. Good for you. 
Good for you. And, and then stepping outside for that 10 to 15 yeah. minutes a day of your vitamin D helps your body to process that even more. Thanks, Steve. That's a great, um, I need to get a picture of ice cream up there because that's like one of my favorite food groups. So another thing in, re in uh, reviewing how to prevent is having a medication review every single year. So what does that mean? That means you take all your medications, either throw them in a brown paper bag or write them down, which is really helpful and either take it when you go visit your doctor on your annual visit, or if you've already been to the doctor and they've adjusted your medications, you can take that same list to CVS, to whatever pharmacy you go to and ask for the pharmacist to review it. Sometimes the cardiologist that you may be seeing might not be talking to the neurologist that you may be seeing, and they may prescribe similar medications or even the same medications with a generic name that you may be getting double of. And we see that a lot in our elder population when they come in for falls, sometimes they're doubling up, which really can cause a lot of problems. The other thing is with besides medic, uh, medication review is that annual eye exam. Um, visual changes occur very slowly and you get used to them. And you're used to seeing things the way you see them and you may not recognize the fact that you may need some adjustments in your prescriptions. My glasses have three different layers. So I have a far away, a computer lens, and then my reading lens. So having, having that visual exam every single year, every year is really important in making sure that you stay upright because we like you, but we don't wanna see you at JPS. Now this is a real proactive way is conditioning and strengthening, strengthening especially your lower extremities. Um, you can see these guys here, this cat stretching. Stretching helps us to stay agile. So when you are out and about, if you start to maybe lose your balance, your body is much more likely to recover if you have prepared that by stretching um, and, and it helps your muscles and your tendons to be able to re react quickly. When I mention lower extremities, that really is like this pup here, what keeps us upright, our lower extremities. So ways to help your lower extremities to stay strong are these kinds of things. Now this, these are little ankle weights that you can see this gentleman here, he's got them strapped onto his ankles. And lower extremities are really important to condition. This kind of an exercise where you're just sitting on even a couch, lifting up your leg and lowering it back down and lifting it up and lowering it back down will strengthen the ligaments and the tendons so that when you're up and about, it helps to keep you um, firmly strong and able to make any quick corrections that you may need to make to stay of, off of the ground. Easy uh, ways to do that is while you're watching the news at night or um, some of us like to watch like Wheel of Fortune um, those kinds of things, those fun things, or um, uh, what is the, uh, a Jeopardy, that's it. I, I, this is why I'm not good at Jeopardy because I sometimes I have trouble remembering some of the, right, exactly, some of the facts. So, um, but you can do this just raising and lowering your legs. Now, if you've had knee surgery, you need to check with your doc to make sure that that's okay. And the weights don't need to be super heavy. One pound is all you need to really make an impact. And in about four weeks of doing this every day for 10 to 15 minutes, you will see a big difference in your agility and in the way that you can move about. Um, balance, practicing balancing um, by keeping your, uh, putting your hands either on the back of a sturdy chair or a countertop or a couch and just lifting and lowering your legs also give you some more um, ways to improve your balance so that you can be like these rocks here all stacked up and perfectly um, able to stand still. Again, some other, some other ways. Now, I put the bird in there because I don't know how they stand like that, but they do that for hours, right? The flamingos. The, um, the, the lower picture of folks with assisted devices, with walkers, with canes, a lot of people when they're in their homes, they think, oh, I don't need to use this. I'm in my house. But the, again, do you remember where I said where most falls occur? In your home. Right. So in your house, you need to be able to manipulate and move around using the assisted devices if you have them. And the ones that the, the physical therapist or the doctor is recommending, whether it's a walker or a cane, you need to use those inside your house. 
it, it isn't a restrictive device. It really in, enables you to move about in a safer manner and in a better way. Don't think of it as restrictive. That is your piece of freedom that helps to keep you upright. So something that we're seeing a lot of is what we call an auto pedestrian and including in our senior populations. Um, I don't know if you all walk outside your home, maybe take a, a walk around the block or um, while Steve's in Florida, walking down to the water park, um, you need to be aware of your surroundings because the cars, unfortunately nowadays, um, people who drive have a tendency to be holding their cell phone, looking at their phone while they're driving and they may not be paying attention to you. And, or we have people that are walking and they have earphones in and they're not paying attention to their surroundings while they're walking. So it's really important if you do walk outside, which we highly recommend, that if you wanna to listen to your podcast or to your music, I love to walk to my music. Um, I only put one ear in for my, uh, for my music so I can hear when there's other sounds around me that helps me to stay alert to my surroundings. When I do come to a corner, or to an edge where there are a stoplight or stop signs. If there's a car there, I try to make eye contact with that driver. And it's interesting how quickly that can occur. When you make eye contact, they see you and then they know that you are there. If you walk in the evenings, especially in Texas, when it is so hot during the daytime, but in the evenings, it's a little cooler. Make sure you wear something that is reflective on your back, on your, either on your arms, something that's moving that can get a driver's attention and help that driver to see you so that you can stay safer. So we all remember Smokey the Bear, right? Only you, it's up to you. You can prevent forest fires. I remember that um, growing up. I remember that seeing all the time, the forest fires. But really nowadays, we also need to be saying it's up to you because only you can prevent falls. It's very, very, very important that you consider um, ways to stay safe, whether it is your annual eye exam, your exercises, your socialization, your meeting with your, your friends and your families, either online or in person, having your medications reviewed and drinking that water is very, very important to stay upright. And um, I hope that that helps you a little bit, give you some, maybe a fresh perspective. And I always love to hear other people's perspectives um, on how they stay upright and stay healthy. I think one, I have a friend who fell down, he's Parkinson's, but um, he ignored his wife. His wife says, don't carry things in both hands. Okay, so yeah. if you're carrying too much, like when I, we have a set of stairs going upstairs, it's got railings on it, so it's safe, but I only carry one thing up, one hand, I don't carry both hands, going up or down, right. you know, because otherwise I can get a little bit unsteady, you know, right. and so and you wouldn't be able to grab that rail, right, 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 yeah, and so those are things, you know, I kind of think about is, don't carry too much, you know, um, carry it one, one handed if you can, if you can't make sure you have spots you could go and set down pieces, you know, go and set down. Right. So like if I'm good, multiple things, if I go up the stairs, I go up and I'll put it on the stairs, take another step up, put it on the next stairs, put another step up, take it on the next stairs, you know, things like that. Mm -hmm. Um, so that I'm not following, I'm not getting out of balance. That, that is an excellent example. I, I love that. I'm going to include that in the next one. And something else you said struck me too. Only carry one thing at a time. And not, that, only not, that only refers to our hands, but when we're carrying heavy weights with regards to our concerns about our families or our life, right. carrying heavy things, putting, putting one heavy thing down before you lift up the next heavy thing to focus on too as well. I love that. Thank you. Uh, that's why I don't watch, watch the news because it puts too much stress. Yeah. Will Jeopardy and Wheel of Fortune is so much more uh, enlightening right. and well health helpful, it you is. know, than news. Yep. I just, you I, know, I, I'm aware of what's going on, but I don't make it an, a nightly event. 
you know. I think you're very wise to do that. Also, Ninja Warriors, if you all are looking for a fun <laughs> show to watch, that is a great show. Uh, it's, it's competition. It's, it's physical competition, and it's so fun to watch. Yeah, those are things that I will never be able to do. Right. So. I know. I know. Yeah. And sometimes we, we were thinking about uh, uh, getting a team together from this group for the Ninja Warrior, but then we decided we might fall. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Thank you, Bill. You <laughs> maybe maybe that's part of the competition. Have big mats on the floor. That's the right. Competition and and low heights. Yeah, yeah. yeah low heights. Right, right. So the the balance beam is laying on the floor. Yeah. <laughs> right. Already high enough. <laughs> you know, it's only an inch off the floor. You know, so you know, but you whatever. Yeah. Anyway. Sorry about that. No, I think that's fa that's fa fascinating, and and um, <coughs> you know, as as we age, I'm um, taking things a little slower. So something that um, we hear a lot in in my emergency department as well is I, when I ask people, I said, well, what how well, how did you fall? What caused you to fall? And they were like, I could I had set my phone down and it was ringing and I was trying to hurry up to answer it. I'm like, but that's why we all have voicemail, right? or they'll call back, or now we have caller ID. So once you find the phone, you can call them back. So there's no hurry to get to the phone or to the door for that matter. Taking the it's time. Ingrained, it's an ingrained habit. Yeah, it is. You know, uh, when the days of when you had to run to the phone. Right. <laughs> and girls used to wait by the phone. <laughs> well, I'm we sorry, I didn't experience that, Martha. <laughs> <laughs> we did, we did, <laughs> we did, mm -hmm. yeah. Marianne, you were telling me about the reasons people come to the emergency department. And I think it would be interesting for everyone else to hear your top five or six. Would you mind sharing that again? Right. So I mentioned, uh, thanks, Martha. I mentioned that we are the level one trauma center. So we're the highest level that you can get with regards to taking care of people who have injuries, injuries from a mechanism of injury. And so what we do every year is we keep track, uh, we keep all of this data and we keep track of the things that cause people to be admitted as a trauma patient. And num the number one reason somebody is admitted to my hospital as a trauma patient is a, either a motor vehicle or a motorcycle crash. That's the number one reason. And especially in the state of Texas, it's a, it's a big one. The second reason um, you heard me say in, in my presentation is falls. And that can be falls from ground, what we call ground level or it can be even a construction worker that falls, something like that. The third reason this year, um, or in 2020, this is new, it's never been this high, is gunshot. So we're seeing a very much increase in our area of violent and violent crime and violent injuries. Now that's happening You when the days that you do watch the news, you see that on the television. People are very angry and, and not giving a lot of grace. So gunshot wounds are number three. Um, number four is um, a physical assault, beating up, whether it's arms, hands, baseball bats, and number five is uh, stabs. So um, it's there's a lot of issues going on in our society. And I think um, the way what you all are doing and meeting mm -hmm. and um, seeing each other is, is wonderful because that keeps that humanity right there. Thank you. Thank you. And yep. other reminders just to be kind. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mary Ann, I was going to ask you, do you know Dr. John Gibson at John Peter Smith? I do not know Dr. Gibson. He's it's in deep. family medicine. Okay. Uh, he does a lot of uh, trips overseas. Awesome. He was a former missionary colleague of mine. Oh, cool. Thailand. And so he, he does, he takes residents overseas every year either to okay. Thailand or to Africa, places like that, to get experience. I'm going to look him up. And I'm yeah. going to say, um, Steve Kavli, is that how you say your last name? My name is Kavli, K-A-V-L-I. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Dr. John Gibson. Okay. I will look him up. We do have a lot of our family medicine guys. We have the largest family medicine residency in the United States. So we have a lot of those folks. And right. I, I'll look him up because... Yeah. Um, knowing that he does that, we always have supplies that are about to expire. And I bet he could use that on some of his work. Yeah, he, he teaches a lot. Uh, he's an ultrasound expert. Okay. 
you know, of course, in Thailand, he was everything. You know, yeah. he did surgery. He did everything. He's a general physician there and did everything yeah. uh, in a small hospital. Awesome. awesome. Thank you. Just want to check. Mary Ann, because yeah. I have had a recent fall, um, it has been uh, brought to my attention by three different people who didn't get together to discuss it that I need to declutter my house. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't have clutter on the floor so much is that I just moved from a lot of space to a smaller space and I didn't get rid of enough. Uh -huh. So because these three people from three different parts of my life have said something, I'm considering uh, donating some furniture, getting a smaller bed, um, nice. getting more, uh, like you said, um, um, a path, some pathways, right. some walk pathway. yeah, pathway. yes, right. I've been the making theory. it hard on myself, and I just wanted you to know that that makes a difference when you hear it from more yes. than one source, right? You know, well, Martha, it's, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I was going to say, Martha, if you're going to get, you're on mute right now, Martha. Oh, that's anyway. okay. If you get rid of furniture, you could always call Mitch and Arlington because they'll come and pick up, and they always make sure it goes out into the community. Good point. Thank you. Oh, there's and, others too, but they, I know I know where it goes with them. You know, it's it's they don't they don't get anything back with it. I think about I think about ninety eight percent of the money that comes into them goes into the ministry. Nothing. Very few go. A little bit goes into the administration. I, I've heard little. good things about Mission Arlington. Thank you for the tip. Yeah, yeah. and That's I understand crazy. that because we have continue our decluttering our house because we've we had you know in-laws that passed away and we've got all of their stuff and we're still working through some of that stuff, you know our garage is full you know just full of things and we know ultimately we're going to downsize we we'll probably might end up go to florida when we know we're going to ultimately downsize so we'll be continually going through stuff now so it's not going to be quite as bad when we get to it. Uh, when we moved here, moved to Texas from North Carolina, uh, Sue actually had come to Texas earlier because she'd gotten a position, a job at DBU, and they wanted her. So I ended up packing everything in the house and putting it onto the trucks. I didn't know what to leave off or anything, so everything went on. So everything from North Carolina came, you know, to us. We had two vans, you know, coming up. And, um, you know, if she had been there, we could have weeded through a lot of that. But she wasn't there. She came for one weekend. Um, but, you know, I couldn't make that decision because I didn't know what she wanted and what she didn't want. You know, so anyway, you're on mute again, Martha. I did that on purpose because the bird was being noisy. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> but I understand that decluttering, you know, uh, um, that is really, a, a, how I say, it's difficult, uh, particularly with older folks, because they're, we're pack prats. <laughs> no. Emotional so, connection to things, too. Yeah, we all, and I've, I've got a thing I'm going to, went out in our van on one of the little adapter boxes, plug in USB and things like that, you know, and. And uh, I figured out what was wrong with it. And I told Sue, I says, well, I said, I'll, I'll just take it home. I've got another one I can replace that end with. And then she said, what? I said, you know, we throw anything away. I said, no, I don't throw anything away. You know, I've got them. So I always try and fix things. It is a challenge, especially when you have things that belong to other family members that have passed and you want to keep that. And it's sometimes it's really hard to do that. Um, <coughs> Taking a photo sometimes is helpful, but you have to make that decision when the time is right. You know, and those pathways to keep them open too. And uh, something else that I have found helpful are the little plug-in lights, like the night uh -huh. lights that are motion yeah. sensor. You can get those at Lowe's and right. Home, at Dollar Store even. And yeah. they're not we've, we've got them all over our house. Yeah. Some of them were over there when we moved in. And then my wife bought a pack. I can't remember what it was. It was their LEDs. Uh -huh. It was like, 
eight for twelve dollars, you know, and they come on and off, you know, during the nighttime type of thing. And uh, you know, we just have them on all over the place. Yeah, that and that's really very helps. important. It does yeah. help. It helps a lot. It helps. Do any of you Wait. have any questions for Marianne? I I know I asked some. Uh, is there anything in the back of your mind that you want to know about? the emergency department or fall prevention or safety? Anything you'd like to ask her while we have the expert here? Um, I answered them all. You covered a lot, yes. <laughs> I know I was, I was gonna share with you when I was in seminary in Fort Worth, one of our neighbors had a motorcycle accident. Actually his wife was a nurse at the hospital he was going to pick her up on a motorcycle. He had the helmet on, but a guy sideswiped him. The helmet actually spun around on his head. Okay. And he recovered, but he was never the same. Hmm. And at that point, we had a motorcycle. And when we got kids, we decided never to get a motorcycle again. Yeah. Uh, saw too many accidents. Yep. And, and like you say, the majority, like, like the accident from your friend, and I'm sorry to hear that, the uh, majority of the motorcycle crashes that we do see are not necessarily caused by the motorcycle person. It's right. the car that's not paying attention right. yeah. to those yeah. things around them, right? Yeah. Marianne, uh, when you, go ahead. I was going to say, do you see bicycle accidents? Yes, we do. We have okay. a lot of those as well. Yeah. Since you're a level it's, one trauma, do you get more of the um, motor vehicle uh, crashes than other hospitals do? So would their numbers and their statistics be different than yours? That's correct. Um, Harris, which we, we partner with in anything prevention, most hospitals, even though we're in competition, we work together because we really can make a bigger impact by working together. Mm -hmm. But yes, at Harris, their number one mechanism for their trauma admissions, they're a level two center is falls. And so we definitely, um, for the majority of the significantly injured people, there are rules in the state of Texas that are set forth by our legislative body and by the Department of Health and uh, Human Services. Um, there are rules that say, tell the EMS folks which place they need to go to based on how injured that person is. So yeah, we do see uh, the sickest and the, and the hardest of the heart for sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. So do you get more of the helicopter people bringing in to you than other hospitals do? We get some of the, yes, we do get a lot of helicopter folks, but our biggest transport is MedStar and ground. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's our biggest one. Uh, a lot of our helicopter transports in are, we actually get transfers from other hospitals because uh, people may start there, but they end up at our place because we have other resources that people need, whether it is equipment or uh, physician specialties. We can't. <laughs> Nancy always sneaks out and doesn't say goodbye. <laughs> yeah. Well, Mary Ann, it has just been fabulous to have yes, you with thank us. You. I, I, think, I know I've learned things today, and I hope all of my friends have as well. I have really enjoyed being here, and it is an honor just to be invited um, to see your faces. Well, very, if you'd like to come nice. back sometime, uh, another six months, we may have new faces, we <clears> may have different outlooks. COVID may look different. So uh, right. think about coming back again. Okay, I sure will. Thank yeah. you so much, Martha. Oh, you're welcome. If you want to hang out, you can see what's coming up tomorrow. Okay, I would love to. Yeah, let's take a look and see what's up. <clears throat> come on, Martha. Yeah, come on, Martha. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it says share. There we go. That's Mary Ann. Tomorrow, we have Peggy Spear coming to us from the Eamon Carter Museum of American Art. Her topic for tomorrow and what she will bring is abstract. And knowing Peggy, you just can't ever tell what she's going to oh. bring that's abstract. It could be anything. Could be anything. Um, Steve tells us that <clears throat> his daughter is being induced today. So oh. within the next hour, he's going to have a grandson, we hope. Can you tell us all about it tomorrow, Steve, okay? I will. Yeah. Great. Anybody have anything else they want to share before we go away? Nope. We're good. We're good. Uh, see you all tomorrow. Tomorrow. See you all tomorrow. Bye. All right. Have a good day. All right. Bye-bye. Thank you, Marianne. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Marianne. Bye. Bye, buddy. Bye-bye.